Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Dante Fortson here with Culture Over Christ, Paul and the Christian Church. So there's been a lot of debate lately um, about Israel, a lot of talk about Israel, and there have been a lot of lies pushed by the church about Israel. And so in this study, I'm going to kind of clear some of those up and show you that they are indeed lies and that the church is not operating in the spirit of Christ, but in the spirit of the enemy, casting accusations uh, before those of us who are true believers in Christ. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about that tonight. But before we get started, for those of you who want to support, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash Dante Fortson. Um, there is a number where you can text me and you can call me for those that are VIP patrons. It's a VIP patron only number. It's specifically for VIP patrons. Um, if you want to get a hold of me, I don't always answer the phone calls, but I do always get back to you via text. Um, so if you want to get a hold of me, for those of you who've been wanting to call, VIP patrons can get directly a hold of me. It's not an assistant or a call service or any of that. It's me directly. Uh, for those of you who want to support via Cash App, cash tag BHITB. Uh, for those that want to support via PayPal, the link is in the description. If you want to support via Super Chat, click the S in the uh, chat during one of the YouTube premieres. For those who have been asking, I mentioned these before, but I haven't mentioned them in a while. I do accept crypto. Um, my Bitcoin wallet and my Ethereum wallet addresses are in the description as well. For those that can't support financially, shares and prayers are most definitely appreciated and always encouraged. Now, to the important stuff. We are going through a crisis right now and our community is suffering. So therefore, I have partnered with Ron Shields and KHM to help our people during the crisis. So for those of you who have more than enough, I'm encouraging you to do the same. If you don't feel comfortable going through somebody else, please do so on your own. But again, for those that have more than enough, please share um, Ron. His mission is to help our people in a time of crisis and so i agree with his mission that we can help our own for those of you who need help don't be embarrassed to reach out to our brother ron shields and khm the links will be in the description for those who want to help and those who need help all right before we get started make sure you click the thumbs up button click the like button make sure you subscribe if you have not already done so and for those of you who are subscribed make sure you click the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos that are coming now before we jump into this study i do want to give you a quick update on the gentile study that was coming interesting development so i am going to have to push it back till next week but as i was digging i thought i was going to be going in one direction with it I decided to look for the word Africa in one of the references that I was using uh, from the 1800s. And lo and behold, the word Africa turns up twice. The first time it, it wasn't much. It was just a general mention. But the second time it turned up, it opened a whole other can of worms because it's mentioned uh, a very specific country in Africa is mentioned in connection with Tyrus, one of the sons of Japheth. And as I started to dig through there, yeah, it turned up a few interesting things. So I'm going to push that study back, but you guys are going to um, get to hear what it is I found uh, during that uh, during that study. And and it may it may tie up some loose ends in the book of Joel and a few other places. All right. No man that warth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who he hath chosen to be a soldier. So understand that there is definitely a war going on. There's always been a war going on. Many of us weren't aware of it. And I mentioned spiritual warfare a lot. And unfortunately, it is those who identify themselves as Christians oftentimes that are at war with God's people. Uh, the Inquisition comes to mind. And I'm going to touch more on the Inquisition at a later date, but the Inquisition comes to mind. It was the Christian church in 1755 um, that amped up the persecution of Israel. There was an earthquake in Lisbon based on two sources um, that I will share again. I've shared them already in the um, Go Ask Your Pastor series, and I do have more of those coming soon, too. 
Um, but I've shared those sources. And the 1755 earthquake in Lisbon started a reaction from the church, which led to the rape and slaughter of black Jews, even children being ripped from the bellies of their mothers, um, children being having their uh, heads bashed against walls and all kind of other disgusting barbaric acts at the hands of Christians towards Israelites in order to appease God. And so we'll talk about how the Christian church engaged in human sacrifice of black Jews in order to appease God. Um, and this is what they thought would appease God, human sacrifices. So tonight we're going to talk about some of the stuff the church has been saying towards us. And we know it's not true. Now, the, when I say the church, I'm not talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about um and again, keep this in context. Tonight, I'm talking about this entity that refers to itself as Christianity, but is really something different. It's more of a Eurocentric um, copy of Christianity or, or Eurocentric spin on Christianity. So one of the things that they will say, <coughs> excuse me, black people are not allowed to talk about ourselves in context of the Bible outside of Hamites. Why is that? There's no problem when you have the European Jews, the Ashkenazi, those from the line of Japheth, according to Genesis 10, they can falsely claim to be Jews and there's no issue. But as soon as a black person says it, a different type of energy starts to, to come about. They immediately get offended. People immediately, in most cases, get offended and they want to defend the liars without even looking at the evidence and the book of Proverbs calls that folly or foolishness to speak on a matter before you hear the matter out. And so many people who have not done the study will automatically defend anything white as right. And if it's black, step back. Black people can embrace any culture we want, except when it comes to Israel. You don't see urban apologists out there telling us we're not Jamaican or Ethiopian or Kenyan or Somalian or Nigerian or anything else. They don't care if we say that. We've heard Berean, Brother Berean, shout out to him. We've heard Brother Berean say he was a Kushite multiple times. How many times have you seen videos on them going in about Berean choosing culture over Christ? It just doesn't happen until we say we're Israel. And they say that any black person that claims Israelite descent is not saved. How is that possible that you can have those Europeans over there outright reject Christ and claim to be Israel? And these some of these people who are black like us, they will go as far as to defend those people who outright reject the Messiah and disrespect the Messiah and then tell us we're not saved, even though many of us have the same exact beliefs as them when it comes to Christ, when it comes to salvation, when it comes to the Trinity, when it comes to a whole lot of things, many of us share the same beliefs. And yet simply because we believe our genealogy is connected to Israel, suddenly we're not saved and we're choosing culture over Christ. It's a false narrative that they've been pushing so that they can prevent those that are asleep from awakening. But understand the awakening cannot be stopped especially by these amateurs who don't know the word of God. So is culture carnal? They One of the things they would say is that culture is carnal. So I pulled up the definition of culture on Google, and I'm going to read several of these right here on the page. This is from the Oxford Dictionary. Number one, a noun, the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. So the arts, that would mean music, and literal art and dance and, and filmmaking and photography, all of that stuff, the arts. How can that be? How, how do you have to choose those over Christ? Are you telling me that not one person in Christianity practices any of the arts? Well, let's keep going. Number two, the customs, arts, social institutions and achievements of a particular nation, people or other social group. Are you telling me there's no Christians embracing their Sicilian heritage? We know they are. How about their French and Dutch and German and Irish and Italian heritages? See, it only 
becomes wrong when black people do it. And we're starting to see that the, the world is starting to see that because they're not keeping that same energy towards everybody. And what does the Bible say? An unjust balance is an abomination to the Lord. So you have to keep the same energy with everybody. There's no different sets of rules for black people. And unfortunately, the church, for whatever reason, isn't calling out these people that are doing it. Right here, we go down further. People also ask, what is the best definition of culture? Culture is the total way of life of a particular people, a particular groups of people. It includes everything a group of people thinks, says, does, and makes. Its systems, attitudes, and feelings. Culture is learned and transmitted from generation to generation. So now, because we say we're Israel, we're choosing culture over Christ. And yet, before we started saying Israel, if I recall... Tons of our our culture has been appropriated. We see Vocab Malone. He appropriated what? Everything. He even has a hip hopper up. He has some white guy in the back saying booyaka, booyaka. They have completely appropriated multiple cultures. <clears throat> and yet there's no problem with that. And as soon as we say we're Israel, suddenly culture becomes a problem. How is it? How is it that they can sit there and... And say that culture is a problem when we look at the definition of culture and the very idea of acting a certain way in Christianity is culture itself. So is culture carnal? The answer is no. Culture is not carnal. We see from the definition that culture cannot be carnal. Culture is an umbrella term which encompasses the social behavior and norms found in human societies, as well as the knowledge, beliefs, arts, laws, customs, capabilities, and habits of the individuals in these groups. We see the entire Old and New Testament is about culture. Israelites had laws and customs and beliefs, and they engaged in the arts, and they had knowledge, and they had habits. The entire Bible is about culture. So we're going to get further into this. Let's talk about Paul. And the reason I chose Paul and I'm not going to get into Peter and everybody else. The reason I chose Paul for this is because for some reason, those in the Eurocentric Christian church hold Paul to be in high regard, often above Christ. It's not a problem with Paul being held in high regard because he's one of the, the you know biggest writers of the New Testament. However, they often hold him above Christ. And so when they say that we're choosing Christ over culture, we're not saved because we talk about our culture and we're making it about race and all this other stuff. I'm going to show you it's a lie because Paul is going to make references to Israelite culture multiple times. And I'm going to point those out. Now, this is not every single reference Paul made to culture. I actually cut some of this down so it didn't get too long. So these are just the ones that I chose to point out. For this study. So we're going to start in the book of Acts. Now, the book of Acts is written by Luke. Now, Luke gives a testimony of a speech that Paul gave. And Paul, in that speech, discusses culture, Israelite culture. So we'll start here. Then Paul stood up. This is Acts chapter 13, verses 16 through 24. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Paul stood up. And beckoning with his hand said, men of Israel and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt and with a high arm brought them out of it. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges and the space of about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they desired a king. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior Jesus when John had first preached before whom I'm sorry when John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel this is Paul talking he says this to the men of Israel he doesn't say this to everybody 
He doesn't say this to the church. He says this to the men of Israel. He says the God of this people, Israel. And he goes on to say he chose our fathers. He's talking about genealogy here. And he exalted the people when they dwelt in strangers of the land of Egypt. He goes on to say that Christ was sent for Israel, their savior. He mentions Saul, the son of Sis, a man from the tribe of Benjamin. We go down to um, Acts chapter uh, 13, verse 23, right here, where it says Christ. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, um, Jesus. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. It says John preached Christ to all the people of Israel. He preached baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So how is it now that talking about Israel means that we're putting culture over Christ? If John the Baptist preached to Israel because he was an Israelite himself, was John the Baptist not saved because of culture? These are fair questions the church needs to answer. Is Paul not saved because he got up and started talking about Israel and his culture and their fathers and the God of Israel and that Jesus was sent for Israel? Let's go to the book of Romans. This is Romans chapter nine, verse one through nine. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God had taken an effect for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel, neither because they are of the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? But in Isaac shall the seed be called. That is they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And we're going to stop there. But what did he say in verse uh, nine? He refers to his brethren his kinsmen according to the flesh. He's talking about Israelites. So again, is Paul not saved because he's talking about his Israelite heritage? And if Paul is saved, why is it that Paul can talk about the Israelite heritage? And yet when we Israelites talk about our heritage, suddenly we're not saved. See, there's a double standard within the church. They just don't like the fact that black people are Israel. And that's what it comes down to because they know that if we're Israel, it, they know what that means for them. They know what it means for their scumbag ancestors that enslaved and raped and murdered and did all this crap in the name of Christianity. And he goes on to say, who are Israelites? He makes that clear that his the kinsmen, according to his flesh, are Israelites. He breaks down Israelite history and culture. He talks about Abraham. He talks about Isaac. He talks about Sarah. He talks about the seed of promise. That's culture. Let's go on to Romans. That was Romans chapter nine. Let's go on to Romans chapter 11, verse one through eight. I should have turned off this air before I got started. I say, then have God cast away his people. God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What or that just means no in old English when you see that W.O.T. means no. Know ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh the intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, then at this present time, there's also also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more of grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. You can't have grace and works together. You either earn it or it's given free. If it's if you earned it, it's not grace. 
If it's grace, then you didn't earn it for those who are confused by what's being said. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it and the rest were blinded. According as it was written, God hath given them a spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see and ears they should not hear unto this day. So again, he's breaking down Israelite culture and history. God has not cast away his people. We know all through the Old Testament, Israel, they are his people. He has not cast them away. So for the church to come in and tell Israel to shut up, because remember, the church is adopted for those who are reading scripture. The church, they are adopted. And in, again, what family does the adopted child come and tell the natural born child to shut up? The church wants to talk about their promises and their inheritance through the adoption or the grafting in. And yet they want to tell those of us of Israel to be quiet, because even though we're natural born, we are the chosen, the children of God. Even though that is the case, we don't have a right to talk about our heritage. We don't have a right to talk about our culture. We don't have a right to talk about the promises made to us through God, the father of the, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We don't have that right, according to the church, but they do. They're allowed to shout and boast and talk and say whatever they want. But Israel has to shut up. Paul, uh, Paul says, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. He gives a full breakdown of his culture. And yet they say we're not saved when we do it. He says God reserved a remnant. That's a reference to Israel. He says some Israelites are blinded unto this day. Eyes they should not see and ears they should not hear. He's talking about Israel, his culture, his people, his kinsmen. And yet the church tells us we can't talk about this stuff. And yet Paul talked about it over and over again. Let's keep going. We're still in Romans chapter 11. <clears throat> Excuse me. Romans chapter 11, verse 9 through 17. And David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. We've gone over this before. The point is of the Gentiles coming into the promise or becoming joint heirs or being adopted was to provoke Israel to jealousy, to make Israel jealous that other people are getting the promises that were promised to Israel. It's about Israel. This whole thing is about Israel. The only reason Gentiles are getting salvation is to make Israel jealous. It's in the same sense that when a guy or a girl wants to make someone else jealous, what do they do? They start a relationship with somebody else and sometimes they just are using the person to make the other person jealous and God is a jealous God he says that all throughout the Old Testament so he wants to provoke Israel to jealousy because Israel provoked him to jealousy by worshiping other gods it says now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them be the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles in so much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Paul tells you his mission is to preach to the Gentiles in order to provoke Israel to jealousy. He's talking to the Gentiles. And as we continue the study of the Gentiles, as I said before, I don't believe the Gentiles are the northern kingdom in the, in the New Testament. It just doesn't make sense. And notice that Paul keeps using the word Israel, not Jew, not Judah. He keeps saying Israel. Israel is all Israel, not a subsection, especially if people want to make that argument that the southern kingdom was called Judah or Jews and the northern kingdom was called Israel. Paul keeps saying Israel and he keeps making a distinction between Israel and the Gentiles. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? What is life from the dead? The resurrection of the dead, the receiving of Israel, the resurrection of the dead. We're not going to get into that right now. I'll probably break that down later um, in a different study. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree, he's talking to the Gentiles, were grafted in among them. And with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. We're not going to go on, but he talks about the grafting in. 
the Gentiles or those who want to identify as the church, who, those who hate their Israelite heritage. Um, that's fine if you identify as the church, whatever. But point being is that the only reason you all have salvation is because Israel messed up, period. And God wants to provoke Israel to jealousy so that Israel will turn back. Paul said that his purpose of preaching to the Gentile was to save some of his flesh. Through the fall of Israel, salvation has come to the Gentiles, who I believe are the Europeans. And I'll talk more about that throughout our Gentile study. Paul calls himself the apostles of the Gentiles. And we talked about that. His goal was to provoke them, which are his flesh. Let's continue on Romans chapter 11, verse 25. We're going to skip down to verse 25 to 33 real quick. For I would not, brethren, that ye be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And I believe we're seeing that now because we're seeing that now that many Christians are having to deal with this Israelite issue, some of them have outright rejected the Messiah because they don't want to believe he's a Negro. And it shows their heart. It has nothing to do with racism on us, on our part. See, they want to they want to try to flip it and say, you're making it about race. This is divisive. Nope, because what's divisive is you casting a white messiah and then telling us we have to worship a white messiah or believe in a white messiah or a brown messiah or a Middle Eastern messiah or any of this other nonsense you guys come up with. And we're not allowed to speak the truth. The truth is black skin causes you to want to divide from us. When we saw the pictures and images of white Jesus everywhere, we didn't say this causes division. We continue to worship in ignorance and the race never came into play for us. That's not why many of us believe we already believed. We just had our eyes open to the lies that the church has been pushing for centuries, centuries. And so now that we are exposing those lies, the church wants to try to lie and flip it back on us. And tell us that we're the ones causing division. No, 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 no. Black skin shouldn't cause division, right? If you guys aren't racist, it shouldn't matter that he's white or, or he's black and not white. You guys should be just as enthusiastic now that you know the truth. In fact, you should be more enthusiastic if it's not about race with you guys. But it is about race. Us saying he's black isn't the problem. Him being black is the problem. And you hate that. Anytime the Bible says he has skin of bronze. Let me see y'all cast a bronze colored person. Get a get a piece of bronze, find a person closest to that color and cast them to play Christ. I bet you it's a problem, even though the Bible says it. So continuing on. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion a deliverer or Zion a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. He's talking about Israelite lineage. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sakes. For the gift and gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Paul is making it clear. You guys are only getting salvation because my people messed up. So don't take that for granted. Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy for God hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. Paul is very aware that those that are not Israel are only getting salvation by default now. And he's making it clear to them. Blindness happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in and understand that many eyes are being opened through my ministry and many other ministries, tail ministries out here. Benaya Israel and a bunch of others. People send me messages all the time that these three ministries and again, you guys haven't seen me um, associate with Benaya Israel outside uh, or in public, really. Um, but his ministry and Teo Ministries are one of the most mentioned ministries on my channel. So the blindness is being removed, which tells me that the, the fullness of the Gentiles is coming to an end. Or the fullness of the Gentiles is coming in. The time of the Gentiles is ending. It says all of Israel will be saved. We know the covenant is with Israel. And it says the Gentiles obtain mercy through the unbelief of Israel. 
Paul is making it very clear that this is all about Israel. And yet the church wants to tell Israel to shut up and not talk about it. So let's move on to the book of first Corinthians. For I would not not brethren that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be. Oh, we came here. Blindness happened to Israel. Oh, I put the uh, same. Oh, wait, there we go. First Corinthians. There we go. Not sure why I went back there. All right. So first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak to, as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessings which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold Israel after the flesh. Are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then, that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say, that the thing which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the tables of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. So he talks, he talks about Israel after the flesh, making it clear. Then he continues to speak about Israelite culture. What did Israel do to provoke God? They worshiped other gods and he's warning against this. He's using the Old Testament to warn the modern church against worshiping other gods. And I'm going to get I'm going to do a study on this. But while people are sitting around looking for the world's final religion and guessing that it might be Islam and this and that. It's not Islam. It's not Islam. It may be Eurocentric Christianity. That may be the final world religion. It may be the religion of the Antichrist. If you really want to get into the the Antichrist, um, some of the studies that we've done, Christianity may be the final or Eurocentric version of Christianity may be the final world religion. Look, they're praying to saints. They're celebrating Ishtar or Easter. They got the rabbits. They got the eggs. They got the tree. They're celebrating Halloween. They try to put their little spins on it. They celebrate all this stuff on pagan dates, the spring, uh, the spring equinox and the winter solstice. The dates and traditions in Eurocentric Christianity, many of them have pagan origin. It's a mixture of many different religions. And in my opinion, it's very blasphemous, especially when you have an image of a white man. When we know the Messiah is not a white man, we know he's bronze colored. You have an image of a white man. That means that is a false image, just like when Aaron made the golden calf in the wilderness and called it God. It was not God. And God took offense to that. So that white man, that Middle Eastern man, that brown tan or whatever color you want to call him. Green olive man. <laughs> that is not Christ. And there is a, a false image hanging in the place of Christ in many churches around the country and really many churches around the world. We're going to come back to that in a later date. And he talks about the law. He says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful, but not, but all things edify not. The law is part of Israelite culture. That didn't come from the church. The law came from Israel. And yet again, the church says that we are choosing culture over Christ. And yet Paul keeps making references to his culture. Let's move on to second Corinthians. Seeing that many glory, this second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 18 through 23, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. Let me read that again and let that sink in. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also for ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer, if a man bring ye in, you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. How be it, wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. 
in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft or often. Paul is giving his resume. Paul says he's a Hebrew. He said, are they Hebrews? So am I. He says he's an Israelite. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Paul is talking about culture and he's not putting it over Christ. Paul is preaching Christ through his culture. And for whatever reason, the Christian church doesn't seem to get that. They seem they can. They seem to think that they can separate the two. Ignore Paul's words completely. Say Paul is saved and then say those of us who preach the same as Paul, who talk about our culture and our heritage. They say we're not saved and we don't believe Christ and we're preaching a different gospel. How is that possible? If we're preaching a different gospel, so was Paul. Because we see that Paul keeps making references to his culture. Let's go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through 16. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in, G in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at the time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Paul refers to Gentiles in the flesh called uncircumcision. Paul is talking about lineage here. He called them Gentiles in the flesh. He's identifying them who they are. Go back to Genesis 10 if you don't know who the Gentiles are. Go watch my Gentile study if you don't know who the Gentiles are. That's why it's important to take it step by step and build up who the Gentiles are. Because Paul keeps using the word Israel, not Jew or Judah. He keeps using the word Israel, meaning he's referring to Israel all 12 tribes and he is separating and distinguishing them from the Gentiles who are called uncircumcision. They are Gentiles in the flesh. He says they were aliens from the commonwealth of who Israel. Paul is very clear. This is about Israel over and over again. So again, the church can't tell us to stop talking about our culture. They can't continue to lie and say we're putting culture over Christ. Now, some of you need to use this ammo when the church comes in and say, you know, you're putting culture over Christ or whatever, use the words of Paul to shut them down because they're certainly not going to say Paul wasn't saved because if they, if they say Paul wasn't saved, then they can't use any of the books of Paul. It, it shuts down the entire argument. So lastly, we're going to look at the book of Philippians. Now the book of Philippians, there are actually, I believe in nine references to, to culture or lineage in, in, in just what we're going to look at. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to I read. Oh, let me start over. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Jesus Christ and have no confidence in the flesh, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man Think it that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. So Paul is about to give the breakdown. He says, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Why is he saying that? Because of who he is. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. This is all culture concerning zeal, persecuting the church. He's saying he went hard as a Pharisee, as a law keeper. He persecuted the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless, blameless. He was a law keeper. But what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. <clears throat> so Paul is saying he has a reason to trust in his flesh because he's an Israelite. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. 
Didn't they say talking about culture is carnal? And yet here's Paul saying he, he can have confidence in his flesh. Why? He said him more. Why more? Because he was circumcised on the eighth day. That's culture. That's Israelite culture. Eight day circumcision. He says he's from the stock of Israel. That's culture. That's lineage of the tribe of Benjamin. We just say we're Israelites. Paul is giving the whole breakdown. I was circumcised. I'm from Israel. I'm Benjamin. I can touch in the flesh. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. He was a Pharisee. Let me know when I stop talking culture here because the church says we can't talk about culture. And yet here it is. Paul just culture, 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 lineage, Israel. Paul is saying everything he shouldn't be saying. If Paul was on earth right now, the church would tell Paul he wasn't saved based on this, based on Philippians chapter three. The church would be saying Paul is not saved because he's putting his culture over Christ. He says he was a persecutor of the church. Why? Because he was a Pharisee. Paul was a Pharisee and they were preaching a new doctrine, this doctrine of Christ and salvation and grace and not the law. And so Paul started to persecute the church. He was a law keeper. The Pharisees were law keepers. Paul knew the law. And we're going to do a study on on the gospel in the law based on Paul's writing. Because most of what Paul talks about goes over the heads of many of these people who call themselves teachers. And some of them want you to reject Paul because they don't understand Paul. They say Paul is contradicting the Bible. And yet Paul is not. Paul is actually teaching everything he teaches comes from the Old Testament. Why? Because Paul is a Pharisee, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He said, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. Paul knew the law better than these dudes out here right now. I can tell you that. And that's why some of it goes over their heads because Paul was so deep in the law. He could preach the gospel from nothing but the Old Testament. And we're going to go over that because Paul has some amazing insights that come directly from the Old Testament Testament. And many of these people out here miss it. So understand that the church doesn't want us talking about us being Israel because they know what that means. It means the Europeans intentionally targeted Israel. We've seen from the evidence. It means that Europeans intentionally did evil to God's chosen and they can't have that. The church can't accept that because the church doesn't want to repent. The church doesn't want to repent. The church wants to defend the evil and make excuses while at the same time persecuting God's people. So we went over six books, epistles, letters, whatever you want to call these of Paul. We only went over six. And in those six, there were 35 references to Israelite culture. That's almost six references per book on average, almost just under six It's, it's uh, five and some change. But how is it that if we're not supposed to talk about culture and lineage, why do we find 30 references to Israelite culture in six books? And I didn't even go over all of it. There were more than 35, but I only chose out those 35. There are zero references to us abandoning Israelite culture. Not once does it ever say that. He said he wanted to provoke Israelites to jealousy. Not once did he say, Israelites, give up your entire culture. Not once. And yet the church tells us to do that. Again, the Eurocentric Christian church, not the, not the whole church, not the whole body of believers, those that follow the Eurocentric Christian doctrine. There are zero references to us having to choose between Christ and culture because we know they don't. We know that these Irish Catholics don't choose between their culture and Christ. None of these other people choose between their culture and Christ. And yet when it comes to black people, we're supposed to choose between culture or Christ. We can say we're African-American. That's fine. We can say we're Kushite. That's fine. But if we say we're Israelite, no, you're not allowed to say that because if you say that, you're not saved. Please show me that in scripture. I challenge any Christian out there. I will give you five hundred dollars if you can show me any place in scripture that says you are not saved. If you say that you are a descendant of Israel, five hundred bucks. I'm good for it. I'll cash app it to you, PayPal it to you, whatever you want. 500 bucks if you show me the verse directly in the Bible that says that anybody claiming to be Israel is not saved. They say we're losing salvation because of culture, which is basically what I'm going over right now. They only say that to us, though. I don't see that. I don't hear them saying that to the white Jews who outright reject Christ. 
They don't even believe in Christ. Many of us are sitting up in the church and they still don't understand, which is why you, you hear some of them say, well, who's the leader of the of the um, the independence? Those of us who aren't belonging to camps or organizations, they want to know who's our leader. What is it we believe? They don't understand yet. We are sitting up in the churches. Many of us have the same beliefs as them, and yet they're acting like we have some kind of weird beliefs just because we say we're Israel. No, many of us are Baptists. Many of us are Lutheran, and there are some Catholics that I've, I, man, I've ran across so many different denominations of black people that are being awakened to their Israelite lineage. I just received a message the other day from a woman pastor. And she told me that her ministry will never be the same again because she's been listening to myself and Teo. And so this awakening is happening everywhere and she wants to know how to start teaching it to her congregation. She wants to know how to roll it out to her congregation. And she's not the only pastor reaching out to me. And I'm pretty sure there are people reaching out to others like Benaya Israel and Teo Ministries. Understand that this awakening cannot be stopped because we understand that we still believe in Christ. We still believe in the book. We aren't teaching a different gospel. We're just saying we're Israel. We're saying the history is wrong because Europeans lied. And there's nothing wrong with calling out liars when you catch them in a lie. There's zero referencing. Yeah, I said this again. So basically, I just said this in several different ways. But they will say we're, we're going to lose our salvation because of the culture. Um, they'll say we're... Um, there's zero references to us not being saved for identifying as Israel. There's no references to these things in the Bible. Like I said, I got $500 for the person that can bring up a Bible verse that says, if you claim your heritage of Israel or if you are Israelite, you are automatically not saved. If you say you're Israelite, you're not saved. Show me in the Bible. If you can't show me, stop lying, period. Stop lying to people. So for those of you who have not grabbed your copy of Undeniable Full Color Evidence of Black Israelites in the Bible, please do so. The link is in the comments. Um, nothing in here. Mostly pictures. Uh, evidence. You can show people. Everything is full color. Hard to argue with the pictures and the evidence. All they can do is make excuses or ignore it. If you want the history, check out The Black Hebrew Awakening, The Final 400 Years of Slaves in America. Both of these are available on Amazon.com and Barnes and & Noble. So make sure you click the thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Remember, if you have it and it's if you have extra to help, please do so. If you need help, please contact KHM Brother Ron Shields, a.k.a. Divine Prospect, and he will try to get you the help you need. He has all of that in place. Um, so with that said, hope you guys enjoyed it until next time. I'm out.